In this episode I'll be sharing my in-depth experience with the Final Cut Pro video editor for the iPad. I'll explain why I decided to shift a portion of my workflow to the tablet, demonstrate the exclusive and powerful feature available only in this app, and offer a brief comparison with CapCut. Furthermore, we will cover the big question – is editing video on a tablet actually convenient? Finally, I reveal how my personal editing style has evolved since making the switch. Final Cut Pro is an application that is available only for iPad tablets. It is not available on the iPhone. There is also Final Cut Pro for Mac OS, but this is a separate video editor and it is in no way related to the tablet version and you need to buy it separately. Speaking of the cost, there is a free 30-day period, after which in my case the cost is 5 euros per month. On the main screen we can immediately see all our projects. And what is convenient, there is a preview here, allowing you to play the video without opening the project. We can see its parameters, how many media files are there, what is the volume of this project. The Final Cut Pro interface is the most ordinary and similar to other editing programs. But the first impression is deceiving and further on I will show you what interesting function is hides within itself. We can import files from the gallery or from files and you can also work with files directly from a hard drive by connecting it to the tablet, which is quite convenient. One interesting feature of the preview window is that we can move it to the part where it is convenient for us. At the same time we will have a larger size of other windows, for example the timeline, which allows for more convenient works on a project with many tracks. By the way, the application interface supports both horizontal and vertical orientation. You can take the tablet with two hands and edit with your fingers. I wouldn't say that this is very convenient for me, but maybe someone will like it. And also, the vertical orientation of the program allows for more convenient work with large projects where there are many tracks. Why did I start working specifically on the iPad? I want more freedom. With the tablet I am more flexible. I can go to a cafe somewhere and work there. And this is great. You are editing and you are in some kind of lively environment, which makes the work more diverse. Because I spent a lot of time here in this studio, recording videos, editing, and sometimes I want to escape somewhere and work in a crowded place. And the tablet just allows me to do this. Unlike my laptop, which is quite old, heavy, large, this pure battery life, and at the same time takes up quite a lot of space on a cafe table. Why didn't I buy some compact and light laptop? The tablet is more convenient for me. I can edit using a keyboard and trackpad, I can work faster using keyboard shortcuts, that is, these quick comments, but I can also edit using the Apple Pencil, and this option perhaps I like the most, because I can create content more creatively, but I will talk about that a little later. So this is our timeline. There is nothing unusual here, but a useful thing is the display is volume levels on the audio tracks which allows you to cut the material faster, navigating where a person is silent and where they are speaking. And there is also an audiometer for volume control and more precise work with sound. Generally speaking of the functions and interface of this video editor, specifically for the tablet, the thing is that it is on the one hand mobile, because it works on a mobile device, but on the other hand it is not a mobile editing program, like the CapCut video editor for the tablet. Because CapCut for the tablet doesn't have many useful functions and there is no possibility to customize the interface, which would help unleash the full potential of a large screen. Final Cut Pro gravitates towards more professional desktop video editors such as a DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, the same CapCut for PC, but at the same time it is more mobile. That is something between a phone and a computer, but a little closer to the computer. Even if we take the most useful ability to view material on the timeline at 2x speed, it suggests that this is a more serious program. By the way, you can record video right away in this video editor. These functions are called Pro Camera and Live Multicam. 
Pro Camera is the thing that will help us shoot video directly from the tablet. Of course, the camera in my iPad Air M2 is not the top one, but speed and convenience are more important here. We can open the camera, make different shooting settings, quickly film something, and the video immediately appears in the video editor, where we can start working with it. At first I thought, why does a tablet even need a camera? And why is it also needed in Final Cut Pro? But sometimes it really can be useful. The multicam function allows you to connect several iPhones to the iPad at once and do multi-camera shooting and again edit them immediately in the video editor. You can also record voiceovers. You can do this by connecting an external microphone or using the built-in one. Moreover, the microphones in the iPad are very good and you can make a high-quality audio recording without additional devices. Another very cool feature is drawing. We take the pen, choose some marker, choose its color and we can draw right on the video. I like this function because it adds a drop of creativity and uniqueness to your video project. Because if we talk about template effects such as graphics, subtitles, sound transitions, animations, which are available in the most video editors, you can then see them everywhere. But drawing by hands is your unique style. It is your unique handwriting. You can write something on the video. You can draw some icon, picture or some arrows to focus the viewer's attention. In addition, it develops your creativity because drawing is not typing on the keyboard. It is a different style of editing. And you don't use template effects. It's cool. I like it. There is also multicam, which means we can synchronize several recordings from several cameras based on the speaker's voice. Of course, you can animate media files. For example, we can make a smooth zoom effect using keyframes. Let's go to the Inspect tab. By selecting a video clip on the timeline, we can work with its speed, opacity, do blending and other standard manipulations. What I usually work with very thoroughly is sound. If you are editing a talking head video, sound tools are very important because viewers can still put up the not a very high quality picture, but they simply want to watch it with bad sound. First we have voice isolation, if we were filming in a noisy place, for example on the street or in a noisy room, this is will help separate the voice and almost mute all other sounds. There is also loudness function, which automatically raises the volume to optimal levels. There is a noise reduction function, which works slightly different than voice isolation. You can also add various audio effects, for example compressor, equalizer and others. Another interesting feature that I also use quite a lot is color adjustment. And here I like to use automatic settings, because the automatic system works well here, making the colors more saturated, bright and at the same time not overdoing it. But in any case you can correct everything manually to your taste. Of course Final Cut has various effects, transitions and so on. The effects are actually very cool, very beautiful and look more professional than in the same CapCut. And what I like is that graphics templates automatically adapt to the screen orientation, which simplifies editing. Another awesome feature is AI generated soundtracks. And it is very convenient that they automatically adjust to the length of your video clip by simple stretching. Regarding export, we can save just a regular video clip, we can save only audio, we can save a screenshot and also the project. Have you ever encountered the problem when uploading a video to reels and shorts, descriptions, likes and comments, obscure important objects in your videos? I have developed a special tool that shows the zone where you can safely place key objects in the video. Load it into any video editor and you will see how the frame is cut off in Reels, Shorts, TikTok, where comments, likes and description are located and you will be able to correctly place important elements in the frame. If you want to speed up and simplify video editing, then following link under the video to find out how to buy this useful tool. Let's talk about the disadvantages of this video editor. Just if we talk about saving video, I really miss the ability to choose the video bitrate here. 
I like to control this parameter because the quality of the video directly depends on it. For example, I know that I need a bitrate of 15 for videos like this review on YouTube because this is the golden mean between file size and quality. When saving here, I cannot choose the bitrate. Respectively, I do not control how high quality video I can save. Another disadvantage of this video editor, or perhaps it is a limitation of the iOS mobile system, during export you cannot minimize the video editor, otherwise the saving is interrupted. This is a pretty big minus, because you can't do anything during the export. What else shocked me? There are no automatic subtitles here. I don't understand how this is possible. This is already a standard function for all video editors, starting from CapCut and ending the Premiere. Also, there is no video stabilization here. What is that about? There is a Pro prefix here, so the program is called Final Cut Pro. But there is no such simple things as video stabilization and automatic subtitles. Perhaps this function will be added in the future, but I need this function now, not sometime later. And given that the video editor is updated quite rarely, which is another minus, I think I will have to wait a long time. Also another minus concerns working with the entire track at once. For example, I need to make all the videos on the timeline quieter. And I can't. I need to select each piece separately and change its volume. Or I need to do color correction for all videos at once. That is also impossible, because when we select several files, the program writes that it is impossible to edit several files at once. You have to set up, for example, color correction for each one separately, copy this effect and paste it into another video. In general, group work with different files is absolutely inconveniently organized here. Despite some disadvantages and limitations, I like editing some of my videos on the tablet, because it is a kind of freedom, it is a kind of creativity, when you can draw by hand and take the tablet somewhere with you, or working lying on the couch, and also use the tablet not only for editing, but also for typing text, editing photos, making a description for a video on YouTube, or even watching a movie or getting stuck on social media. I like that Final Cut Pro has serious functions that are usually available only in desktop video editors, but at the same time the interface is simple and clear. Also working with Apple Pencil on a touch screen brings me pleasure. This is a different experience of interacting with the editing program. I like that I can discover something new in my activity, not just sit behind a computer and keyboard, but works a little differently. And this is great, it expands your capabilities, expands the boundaries of your creativity. I like that technology can expand our potential as content creators. I get a kick out of this and get a lot of pleasure. And by the way, check out this video, in which I told how the iPad made my work more productive and creative. As always, dare to create and see you soon.